G'day everyone, X-Ray Racer 1 here again. This is part 10 of the X-Ray X1 build series. In part 10, I'll be going through with you uh, the steering set system. Now, fortunately, this is a very simple steering, st steering system. Getting tongue tied again. Um, what I will be going through with you is probably one of the hated parts of any RC car. Well, for me anyway. And that is the turnbuckles and ball cups. And I'll be doing that first before we get into, I guess you could say, the meaty part of the steering system. Um, so yeah. Now, as always, like I say, multiple of anything. I'll do most of it off camera, then I'll go through with you the last one. So here we have the steering links, all done, nice blingy looking orange. Um, so I've done that, the one I have here is for the servo link, so to connect the, st the steering bell crank to the servo, it's the exact same procedure. Now. Um, in the manual here, it shows you what length to set them at for the initial settings. Um, one thing I recommend that you get, it's not a must have, but it really does make it a lot easier. Uh, it's a set of digital calipers. Um, I've already got this set at the moment now for the uh, servo link uh, for the distance. Um, honestly, it makes things so much easier to use one of these and you're not fiddling around. Another thing that helps, um, these aren't a must have, but it does make things easier and saves you having, having to use pliers. This is a Hootie 4mm um, link, camber link adjuster. Basically what it does is just sits in there like that and you can adjust uh, the links and um, or adjust the turnbuckles so it makes it that much easier and it saves you wrecking with the turnbuckle there now with turnbuckles they have opposing threads and by that I mean one thread is clockwise and one thread is counterclockwise and it should, looks like on the uh, servo link, it is different. Now uh, there is no notch. But if I, with this one here, I'll just bring it up to the camera so you can see. If you look, oh, I'll just put my hand here so it'll focus. If you look closely, you'll see there's a notch just on this side here, a little notch. That indicates the left hand thread. So that uh, so you know which uh, is the counterclockwise thread. So take note of that when you're doing it, and it just makes things a little bit easier. So let's build it. What we'll do is we'll use a little turnbuckle adjuster, screw this on, and what I do is I'll just get my one of my wrenches and just wind it on. Turn it around. Put the next one on. Okay, so this is uh this is an opposing thread. All right. So now we go the other way to wind it on. Find it a bit strange that there is no notch on the link okay so then what we'll do is while it's mostly all the way on so we can see that it's not passing through so it's just that little bit still that little bit too long so we'll wind it a little bit more butter fingers
right, we'll check, check it again. And there we go. Perfect fit. So that's how we want it. All right, so we'll put that there. Okay, so now we'll go on to the rest of the steering system. So now we'll go on to the bell crank. Now, I've done a bit of the assembly on it, so we have a bearing in there, a ball stud here, and a ball stud on the uh, part of the other part of the bell crank. This is where the uh, steering rods connect to. So we'll put the next one on. Take note of in the manual of their set where the initial setting is. So we're putting it in this hole here. All right, and make sure that you have one of the shim, a shim on each one here, so that they're evenly, they're even height. All right, so now we'll put in a bearing. Now this next part here, you want to be very, very careful. So we'll put in a little bit of thread lock and you really want a little bit because you do not want any thread lock to get on into the bearing. So very carefully put a little bit in. And with the scalpel blade, just work it around. You, like I said, you really do not want it to get on the bearing because it'll bind it up. Now with a cotton tip just wipe away any excess that could get on there. Now we'll put it on. And then we'll put get the screw, two millimeter driver, And this might have, yes, four millimeter. There we go. So there you go, folks. This post here is has two uh, grooves cut out, so you can put the four millimeter turnbuckle tool in there to help tighten things up, which is good. Okay, so now what we'll do is I'll move these out of the way. <laughs> we'll. Okay, so now, next part, we will put a little bit more thread lock in. Wipe away any excess. And very carefully assemble it onto the, onto the chassis. So we will put it screw in. This is going to be very fiddly. Butterfingers. Sorry if it's off camera guys. Okay, so this is where the little turnbuckle tool will come in handy. Alright, so it's in there, as you can see. It's in there, it's not binding, which is good. Alright, so now comes the fun part. We are now going to attach the steering links. Uh, the servo link will be last. So carefully with some pliers. Sorry if this is in the way folks, but it's going to be hard to get in. Uh, 
Okay, I'll see if I can get... Okay, so what we might have to do here, folks, is we might have to remove the arms. The, uh, just turn the upper arms away. Because it is a very tight fit. Try this. All right, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to do the other one off camera because it is going to be an awkward fit so we'll just screw this back on okay so take note if you are putting this in just disconnect the upper arm and move it out of the way and this will make it easier for you to make it easier for it to connect. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just quickly put this last one on. All right. So we'll just turn it around to see if I can put the servo link on. Might be a tight fit yet again. Yeah, it's going to be a tight fit, people. Be uh, I'm going to have to take this arm off here to get to the steering, uh, for the steering uh, link and for the servo link. So what we'll do is we'll start, leave it there for uh, this part. And so, you're, so you saw the procedure to attach it. And as you can see here, it's not binding at all but it is a very, very, very tight fit. So I'm gonna to have to, like I said, undo the two screws here, just move it out of the way so I can get to the ball stud for the steering uh, link and for the servo link. So stay tuned. So like I said, I'll do that off camera. Stay tuned for part 11, where I go through with you installing the steering servo and assembling the servo saver. Stay tuned everyone.